Hello, my name is Dick Johnson. I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Arcata Sunrise, and I'm the editor of the club's newsletter, The Sunrise Spirit. I wanted to spend a few minutes with Barbara Browning, who will be our club's 23rd president as of July 1st. Barbara is the chief operations officer for the California Center for Rural Policy at Humboldt State University. She is also a productivity trainer and professional organizer, and the name of her firm is Order Within. Barbara was the driving force behind one of our club's biggest success stories of late, the nonprofit Extreme Makeover, which she and former Sunriser Kevin, Kevin Collier dreamed up. Beneficiaries of the makeovers include the McKinleyville Family Resource Center, the Arcata Playhouse, and the Boys and Girls Club of Eureka. Let's ask her what she has planned for the coming Rotary year. Gary C.K. Huang of Taiwan, next year's Rotary International President, has asked us to light up Rotary in 2014-2015. You had a chance to meet, with, meet him at the President-Elect's training seminar, or PETS, earlier this year. What exactly does light up Rotary mean to President-Elect Huang and to President-Elect Browning? Thank you for that question. I, well, so here's what I understand that it means to uh, President-Elect Huang, Gary. Um, that it's really lighting up Rotary by the things we do every day as Rotarians, whether it's in our own communities, uh, the international work that we do, or the work we do around polio eradication. So it's big things and the small things that really light up Rotary. And I, I bought this pen when I was at Pets. It says Illuminamos Rotary, which means illuminate Rotary in Spanish. And I actually think that translates better. <laughs> Uh, so it's illuminating Rotary with our actions, and uh, I don't know that he really knew what light up Rotary translated to. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so for me, it, it really relates to finding things that we each as members love about Rotary, and uh, as, as Rotarians, what do we love, and how can we each engage in ways that illuminate us personally. So I'm kind of thinking about it on a personal level. And then also uh, thinking about it, how can we illuminate things in our community locally? How can we light things up locally? And how can we light things up internationally? And so uh, that'll go to the next questions you're asking about uh, what are my goals for the next year? Well, I think you asked the question. <laughs> what are your top goals for, for your year as president? <laughs> okay, well, as I've already said, I really <laughs> hope to engage our members as much in, as possible in doing things that they have a passion for and enjoy. And I've had some really great conversations, both at the fireside conversations and just one-on-one -on -one meetings that I've had with people. Uh, getting an idea about what excites people and what lights them up, whether it's uh, working in our community locally, foreign countries, or uh, um, you know, working with youth locally, whatever it is, finding things that light people up and, and that they have a passion for and getting them plugged in in the committee structure in places that will really make a difference for the people they serve and for them personally. Uh, we have a really fun club. <laughs> I think we can all agree to that. And I just want to continue with the tradition of fun in our club. I know Jessica put the F-U-N in Rotary this year. Uh, I hope to keep it there. <laughs> with, with fun and lively meetings that will include excellent speakers and recognizing our members for who they are and what they're up to. I like the way the recognition committee assigned members of their committee to different members of our club, and we're going to do that again this year, and really hope to find, find ways to recognize everybody with the interesting and exciting things that they do. So that's the meeting on the meeting side. And then I want to have a lot of opportunities for fellowship. And I want at least one of our activities, in addition to the, uh, bar the bar beach barbecue that we do when the exchange student gets here, mm -hmm. uh, that it includes kids from our club. I think one of the things that makes our club really special and, and unique is that we're a family-friendly club. And so I want to honor and celebrate that and have like uh, one of our additional fellowship events have be able to have kids mm -hmm. present and really recognize and honor them in that in the fellowship. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, then I have a couple more. Okay, well, I'm, I, <laughs> don't let me stop here. <laughs> yeah. 
So I want to do at least one large scale SWAT project. I think that, well, I can't say just I think that has. Let, let, let me explain for the benefit of anybody who's not a member of our club mm -hmm. who might be listening. A SWAT project is serving with our talents, S W O T. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we do good work, we don't spell so good. Um, <laughs> it's but, based on a SWOT analysis. That was a joke, it was kind of a play on an acronym. <laughs> play on an acronym. <laughs> anyway, so, yes, okay. And, and that the SWAT the SWAT teams came out of it seemed SWAT team idea came out of the extreme makeovers. Am yes, right? and you actually had a lot to do with the fact that SWAT was born. Do you know that? Are you calling me a midwife? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. They you know they came to hap they came to pass because as you mentioned in the intro, Kevin it was Kevin Collier's idea, and you were still on the board at the mm -hmm. time, and. The, Kevin came to the board, said he wanted to do these SWAT projects, and uh, I said I'd help him come up with an idea. And by the time he and I met to flesh out an idea, he had already chosen, he had already gotten gone to the Humble Arity Foundation and gotten the McKinleyville Family Resource Center for our first adopt a nonprofit is what he was calling it then. Mm -hmm. And when I went back to the board to report on it, you said, wow, this is a really big deal. We should make a big deal out of this. And so we had three more weeks before it actually happened, and we blew it up at that point. We lit it up. We lit it up back then, yeah, yes. And we were, <laughs> yes. We were so, foreshadowing this year. Yeah, so I don't know if you knew that, but I don't know that it would have ever, that concept would have really gotten off the ground as it has without you saying, let's make a big deal out of this. <laughs> So I really want to do another one of those projects where we have the opportunity to serve with our talents and make, uh, the thing that I love about them is that we get to do a physical transformation in a short period of time yeah. that those organizations would never have been able to do on their own. Well, maybe not never, but it would have been extremely difficult to be able just to make the physical transformation that we're able to make. Well, and, and we are able to bring in Contacts from throughout the community, which, which has in the in the case of um, well, all three all three of the makeovers we've done has been incredible. We've had such great community support. Yes, we have, and then when we're done, that community support continues, which has been one of the most uh, rewarding parts of those SWAT projects to me is to see not only are they able to sustain the physical changes that we've made, but they've been able to grow as organizations and become stronger and more sustainable and, and make bigger contributions in our community. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to doing at least one of those on a large scale. And then we're thinking of doing some, deploying ourselves in smaller groups and doing things um, on a smaller scale, like maybe helping senior citizens clean up their yard and four or five of us go out in the afternoon and make a big difference for one person. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then my, my fifth and final goal is that we do an international service project together and we're looking at the possibility of Costa Rica right now uh, in conjunction with the Arcade Noon Club and we're just waiting, I'm, I'm st we still need to, I still need to meet with them and see how that's going to work out, but if that project isn't going to be big enough for all of us, then I want to find another one and soon. <laughs> quickly and yeah. get it scheduled, get it figured out and get it on the calendar so people can go. But I've had the opportunity to go on several projects like that in my lifetime and they've been incredible. The difference that we get to make in the communities that we work in is amazing, but it's also made a huge difference and changed my life as well. So That's very transformational. Yes, yes it absolutely is. My turn again? Your turn. Okay. <laughs> or should I ask my next question? That's good. <laughs> So what do you like most about being a Sunrider? Not necessarily the president, but just being a member of our being club. Being a part of our club. I really like the people in our club and the fellowship that I get to experience as a part of it. It's, it's different than friendships that I have outside of Rotary. There's just really something um, meaningful and valuable to me to be able to be with the group of people who are together around the idea of doing service. It's this, so it's the fellowship and the service, the combination of the two, that I really like. Uh, and whether it's doing work on behalf of our local community or work um, on behalf of people out in the world that we are never going to meet, I just really appreciate being able to be with people who are like-minded. That's great. So I'm, I'm hoping that there are some potential Rotarians watching this video 
how would you encourage them to find out more about becoming a Rotarian and specifically becoming a member of the Arcata Sunrise Club? Well, the first thing I would do is um, invite them to visit our website at arcadasunrise.org. And then while they are there, they can check out the Sunrise Spirit, which you write and do such a great job at. That will recap our meetings and give them an idea of the kinds of things that we're doing at our meetings. Uh, and the kind of service work we do as well. And then they can also contact me directly or contact anyone in our club to learn more about our club. And then I would say come and check us out at a breakfast meeting. Uh, we meet Fridays at 7 a.m. in Arcata at the Plaza View Room. Okay. Would you add anything? By what? <laughs> would you add anything to that uh, question? No, actually, actually I, think that, I think that's great. I think just um, if you... if. If a potential member, if you're thinking about joining Rotary, it doesn't have to be our club. Being a Rotary, it's, it allows you to be part of something that is really big. It's worldwide, literally worldwide, and <clears throat> it changes people's lives every day. And um, talk to a Rotarian, talk to a Sunriser, yeah. and with, hear how they, ask them how they like being a Rotarian or how they like being a member of the Arcade of Sunrise Rotary and you'll know. One of the things that I always like and, and I've had many conversations about this is the idea of uh, Rotary changes lives but probably the first life that's going to change is your own. I can hardly say that without crying though. I understand <laughs> but it's true it, it's, it's really true it's, it's, it's one of the most efficient ways to give back to your to your world, yes, um, and you can do it. In, you can do it in so many ways. And if you're passionate about something, Rotary will be passionate about it with you. Yes, they'll come along with you. And they there's will. an avenue. Yep. There's an avenue you can serve in. <laughs> so, do you have any final words for our, our audience here? Well, uh, thank you, Dick, for taking the time to do this. I thought it was a great idea, and really appreciate the time you're putting into this. And other than that, I would just say that I'm really looking forward to a fun-filled year where we get a lot done and can't wait to light up Rotary. Light up Rotary. Well, light thank, up Rotary. Thank you, Barbara. And, um, we're looking forward to your first meeting, which is going to be... July 11th, I think. Because 4th of July is a Friday, I believe. Okay. Yes. So, so July 11th at the Plaza View Room. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. Looking forward to it.